you see as a future, uh, medium to long term for the fossil fuel industry? I say that because coal plants are becoming viable. Coal as an energy source. Uh, petroleum too, clearly. Prices have collapsed, but what the price collapse means is that there's not going to be a lot of investments going forward. So at some point, the supply will become limited. So it's also a long life cycle kind of business. Whilst at the same time, you know, alternatives are rising up. It's, it, it's two things, right? So example, now that gas prices are low, people are reconsidering their interest in electric vehicles, right? Because one of the incentives for people transitioning was, well, if I spent, so typically in my case, I had a, I had a hybrid, which is the Volvo XC90. So it takes me three hours to charge that car and three hours gives me 29 kilometers of range. It's the only seven seater SUV on the market for Europe and North America, excluding China, the rest of the world. That's the only option you have. If you want a big car, apart from the Model X, it's, it's more spacious than the Model X. But if you want a big car with a big family with room, the only option was a Volvo XC90. But after three hours of level two charging, you only have 29 kilometers of range, right? small. which is extremely small. So you still need to fill your gas tank. Now filling the gas tank of such a car with the prices we had then for about $1.20 a liter, you're looking at 90 bucks a week, right? So if you run that car completely on ice without having it plugged in, you're losing $90 a week. If you plugged in as much as often, then you're, you're probably gonna spend $90 a month, okay? And same way, if I 100% commuted with a Tesla for that same period, it was gonna cost me $40 a whole month, mm -hmm. right? So in the first instance where it's 100% gas, the whole month I was looking at very close to $400 for a full IC. And then if I switch to full electric, I'm looking at 10% of the cost, right? That was the price then. But today with current oil prices, that same vehicle for a month will cost me half of that. That's $200. Right. So the incentive for me as an electric vehicle owner was, look, I'm not spending $4,000 on gas a year. I'm spending only $500 on charging, right? But now mm -hmm. that 400 a year, I mean, that 4,000 a year has changed to 2,000, right? So if this is sustained, then people say, well, I can handle 2,000 and buy a car for $30,000 as opposed to buying a car for $60,000 and spending, you know, $40 a month, which translates to 500 a year. So all these dynamics are making people think twice because a lot of people were initially drawn to EVs. Don't forget most of the incentives we had are facing out. Right? So the U.S. tax credit for Tesla is, is, is gone. Right? It's probably for the other new players who would have it here. Same for Canada. Uh, incentives have moved from so much to, you know, to almost nothing. For a good EV, the only time you get an incentive is when you buy a very cheap EV, which only the SR Plus qualifies for Teslas and then smaller ones. So all these incentives are no longer there to justify the extra expense. And all people see is, oh, energy is cheaper. So the original push to EVs, we've lost some traction just because oil and gas prices are falling. Mm -hmm. And typically people here are buying cars for five to 10 years. So anyone who would have bought an EV this year or next year will potentially not. And if they don't buy and they stick to gas cars, that's another five years stuck in the oil and gas cycle. Do, do you understand yeah. the dynamics? I, I, I understand the dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. You, have a, you have a question. Um, on the last, I mean, the last session we had, I was discussing this with Dad and the other guests. Because of the fall, fall in oil prices, I mean, it's, it's a doom for electric vehicles. 
especially that's supposed to pick, I mean, to pick up this year in, in sales and all of that. And uh, when you were talking, you were mentioning different kind of projects that Canada is still spending huge money on. I want to know how soon do you think Canada wants to switch over to renewable energy? So what, what I say with regards to oil and gas expenditure is for Western Canada, specifically mostly Alberta, okay. right? So the bulk of Canada is, is going towards renewable. In my province of Ontario, we're still on wind farms and nuclear. And we're, we're still pushing towards green energy. Don't, don't get me wrong. But if a province like Alberta is spending, yes, it's the federal government that bought a pipeline for $4.5 billion. Your returns are not coming for 15 years, which means nothing is going to change towards renewable energy in those areas for the next 15 years. Because if you do, you've lost that investment. Yeah, yeah. Right. So for those areas, honestly, you will not see moves towards green energy for 15 to 20 years. That's how much of a delay you have in the system for, for such investments. And it's, it's, it's 50, 50 in that the local economies all depend on oil and gas. Mm. Right. I, I have a two bedroom, apartment there for work and rent is two thousand dollars and that is a very small town of about three thousand people mm. right and typically that is more expensive than in, in 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 my city where i live the most expensive areas are toronto and vancouver and these are the very big cities comparable to new york and and all of that and that's how much they're paying Right. So the only reason why it's so expensive in my little town with four grocery stores is because it's an oil and gas hub. And so the economy was 100 percent dependent on oil and gas workers who come in. Right. Okay. So it had driven home prices, rent prices, everything high, everything very high. And now that the oil and gas industry is collapsing, it was shut down, yeah, including pretty much all the local businesses in that province. But is, is this not similar to what uh, all producing countries like Nigeria are going to be facing? So what, what, what they're saying is like the government is trying to support the oil and gas industry. Okay. Will it not be wiser to do a managed collapse while finding opportunities? So policymakers pretty much are accountable to the people in their present, okay? So I sit here and I contribute to policies in my municipality. When I sit with my MP, when I sit with people in my province, we're pushing for progress for us. Same way when people sit in these oil and gas industry dominated provinces and prisons they push local demands. So if you were the MP or the premier, everybody coming to you is telling you, hey, my kids were getting out of high school and they had a job, which gave them six figures, right? Now you're telling me that that oil and gas industry we've had forever is bad. Mm. So you're bringing us renewable energy. Where my <laughs> same kid gets out of high school and Alice. if he gets a job in the renewable energy industry, he'd be lucky to make 50,000. Who is going to smile at that? Right? So as much as we're pushing, and these are the discussions I have over there, I'm like, yeah, I know you guys don't get it. You don't, you don't agree. But the reality is, it's a whole new skill set. And you need a higher qualification to make what you're making. So it's either you get up for more training and adjust your lifestyle or you keep fighting but eventually the tap will close yeah i remember i remember that the the, the first resistance greta the teenage girl yeah um advocating for uh sustainable environment and energy and all of that had the first resistance she had 
was in Canada. And um, it, probably the, the country is not uh, so bad at the bar in urban energy, but uh, with what you just said, I feel, okay, it's just a part, and that's just for the economy. Because what the people that, that were interviewed on that resistance said, because they matched up a crusade against our own crusade as well, was that, I mean, she cannot come and tell us how to run their economy. Like, right. well and gas is running the economy. I mean, why would you tell us it's bad? And, I mean, that falls in the belief of uh, the U.S. president as well. So, I don't know what we are to weigh. Are we what you just said? Are we to weigh our survivor or what is good for the environment? Human beings are short-term incentivized people, right? So we look at our generation and say, I can have a good life by destroying my environment, okay? And, and that is why we have all the pushback because I, I keep saying that it's, uh, so Ontario, Ontario is the most populated province of about 14 million people. Mm. Alberta would have, about half of that, right? So the pushback is from 10 to 20% of the country. Do you get what I'm saying? And if you look at that, even in our most recent elections in 2019, it was the same, right? But you cannot use the view of 20% to judge a whole country. And it's the same in, in the States where Back in the days, I, I worked in, in Texas, and it's, it's still the same today. It's the truck culture. It's the guzzling culture. It's okay to buy a 5.7 Hemi engine and just drive around doing simple things because that's what everybody's grown up to do. As opposed to when I was in Europe, I had my car packed for almost two years, and I probably didn't move it up to five times. I, I stopped paying road taxes. I never bought the car out of the garage. Because when I walk out, cities are planned in such a way that I could walk or cycle to do 80% of what I needed. And if I didn't need, or if I had to go beyond, the buses were on a very efficient network. But you can argue that Europe is very small compared to North America. This is a, a larger. So... Here, I cannot do anything without driving, especially in, in, in the Western provinces, right? So when, when you're pushing for all of these changes, Europe has been able to transition really quick because transportation is very well planned. As I said, public transit was my best friend. I hardly drove anywhere because I could take trains. I could move from the Midlands to London in, in an hour. And it would take me one hour, 20 minutes to drive. For about 50 pounds, I can have a first class ticket on Virgin. If I drove, I would spend about 70 pounds on gas. If I so took, the economics was driving you. The economics justified the transition, right? The cheapest train service was about 15 pounds. And if I wanted first class train service, it was three times that. And if I drove in and out, I would spend four or five times that and be exhausted from driving and spend more time, right? So it made sense to patronize public transit, which reduced emissions, right? Yeah. But if you look at a place typical like Texas. I had to drive everywhere. And if I was ever going anywhere away from home, the first thing I would do is to book a rental. As soon as I get to the airport, I pick up my car. It's a I, different I, cultural paradigm. Right. Right. I couldn't rely on public transit for anything because one, the, most of the economies depend on car sales. So even if there was an incentive, apart from the very big cities like New York and Boston, where you have rail and bus almost working, most of the other places you'd have to drive because 
the oil and gas industry is producing oil and gas that have to be consumed. And two, the car producing companies, they need to make sales. So there's a culture of encouraging people to buy more cars, to consume Mm -hmm. more energy, right? So that would delay the transition here. Okay, uh, I have a question. I have a question for Olukoku. Okay. Based on okay. what Percy uh, just said, how yeah. does that affect your perception? Because uh, when it comes to your country as a Nigeria, because mm-hmm. I think uh, you are you very you very vehemently oppose uh, the policy decisions made by your politicians when it comes to finding alternative sources of energy and diversifying your economy. But now, it seems it's not peculiar to Nigeria. What, 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 what is your take? Okay, thanks, God. Nice question. You see, um, Africa, I mean, Nigeria is quite different in perspective, in reasoning, and especially with the kind of uh, policy makers we have. Like I said, they were warning the federal government against the production and manufacturing and sales of electric vehicles, but they didn't warn the government against COVID-19. Now, COVID-19 came in and exposed us. When they were paid off for electric vehicles, as just happened with this pandemic. Are you getting the fact now? So if we are to start from scratch, start from ashes, we've got nothing else to lose. So like, the, like I said, we ha- I had a discussion with an expert yesterday. And what we were talking about is we do not have to produce electric vehicle by ourselves. We can produce parts. Whether ice or electric, we still need parts. We, uh, we need suspension, brake pads, uh, different kind of parts we have in a vehicle. Nigeria can do well in producing this. And don't get me wrong, they've been trying so much in diversifying the economy, but it's not just working. They are, they are focusing on agriculture. Now, the type of agriculture they are focusing on is not the one that will really bring the money. They're talking about farming. Farming that is not a mechanized type will not bring any income for, the, for, for, for a, a nation of 200 million people. You just want people to go and do whole and cutlass farming. It doesn't work. You have to, it has to be a mechanized kind of farming, in my opinion. And again, there is more money in processing rather than the, the raw farming as it is. So I think there's a misalignment of priority when it comes to our own case in Nigeria. So um, if, 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 if going by what Percy just said, I would say, okay, that's, an, that's the case. Let us look at Norway. How is Norway doing? Despite that they had uh, $1 trillion in excess from their crude. I mean, and they contribute between 1% to 2% of the world demand. And yet, in April, the sale of electric vehicles surpasses that of ICE. And the government is doing so well to incentivize people that, are wants, that wants to you know, buy electric vehicle and all of that. If we do not have a clue, we have an example, we should just learn from them. What are you doing? How well are you doing this? What can we do as, as a black nation? So that's... That's, that's the way things are. It's more of a frustration for me right now than uh, any other thing. Okay.